Okay, how did we get here? All right. Um, here's a birthday cake. Custom job, commissioned by a client. Something a little bit different about this. If you start looking closely, you're going to notice this is not your average birthday cake. So, how did we end up with a surf and turf meat cake? Are those actually bacon rosettes on top of it? What kind of buttercream has chive bacon, sour cream, and whatever could be underneath in those layers. Well, you get to watch the construction of this masterpiece. We have a video for you showing step by step how we pulled this off. Welcome to the Surf and Turf Meat Cake demonstration. Okay, new project. Never been done before, at least not by us. We're doing a meat cake for a client, a new forum. So this cake's going to be made from beef tenderloin, swordfish, shrimp with, a, it's like a garlicky buttered shrimp with lemon that's going in it. And it's going to be layered. And then the frosting, or if you can even call it frosting, but it's frosting in this case. In this case, it is the frosting. It is a um, twice baked potato, mashed potato with um, sour cream, chive, powdered bacon, and a ton of butter. And what's so funny about this is I have a guide on my cake board here. This is how where it's going to be served. The guide is in a perfect circle of the size we thought that it would be and I'm fitting the pieces of tenderloin in now and I'm mushing them together. Now everything is uh, cooked but everything is not cooked a hundred percent of the way it's close because we don't want to leave things raw. Layer one. Layer one is the steak tender. layer. This is a steak layer. And there's going to be more steak layers but that's just is just one. Well, this we'll is where we start one. out. The challenge was finding things that he liked because he's pretty particular about how he eats. Obviously, he's not having a regular cake. But she um, let me know in no uncertain terms that this is a very particular person. That's fine. Our entire business is built around particular people. Frosting that we chose, twice baked potato, mashed potatoes. These things are truly decadent. Now, we had ideas of doing... Uh, adding some like uh, mashed parsnips uh, or other type of vegetables to this, but the gentleman uh, we gathered really didn't care for it was just gonna be too parsnips, sweet. and we w and we didn't want to. And for me, that would be perfect, uh, but but uh, we don't want to give him something that he may be unfamiliar with or just not like. So that's part of it too. You wanna you don't want to get through all of this and have somebody go. Oh, gee, I, you know, I didn't really like that. It was about surf and turf. That's how this developed, and so we decided to go this route. And But things don't, you know, somebody that doesn't like their beef with swordfish, with shrimp, uh, you know, that's another story. And, one thing and uh, that could be done in a different way. It could be an all-meat one. And so, but, I, you know, I have a feeling we're probably going to do this again in some way. It just, it feels like it because... Well, because you can do... I mean, I can see doing something, and not everybody's favorite, but having like a layer of a liver pate. We talked about doing like a beef wellington... Um, lid. Puff pastry lid, exactly. And you worked that out, that it would probably be mashed potatoes on the side like this, but a top of a really nice crunchy puff pastry. Which, of course, would have to be done uh, Separately. On, on the side and... and laid on top like a dome. So right here I've got a decent frosting bed and our next layer is going to be this is basically good uh, god that looks wonderful you know shrimp and shrimp and garlic with uh butter you know it's a kind of a very, scampi very, very, yeah it's a scampi it's very traditional and but we figured that that with the additional flavor the butter on that that it's going to solidify a little bit so that when it when this is warmed up it will melt into the potato. Did you put these in the freezer? No, I put them no, in the that's fridge. Not, no, 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 that's not going to work. I put them in the fridge because I want, I want to control. No the, more. 
I want to control the temperature. Thank you, honey. I see this. So there you go. All right. That's the that's So we're on layer stem. number two already as we're okay. going along. We're filling in all the gaps between the shrimp with the mashed potato mix. Now, I'm just dish, getting. Is this too thick for you? Um, I don't know yet. It's the two pieces. I'm, okay. I'm going to cut the swordfish. I'm going to show you some of the swordfish right now. Just so you know. There you go. You know, a little bit of swordfish there. It's a little thick for me at this point. You can see that I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it down because I don't want the weight of it to affect the layers. Okay, I have I, I just cut I cut some of the swordfish on the bias to make sure that it is uh, thinner. So on the bias for those who don't know means on an angle. So that's some sword there. And God, that stuff is beautiful. The sword is beautiful. There's been a lot of really good swordfish no, in it's not, the. Um, it's not perfectly. Uh, you know, I'm going the, the to the same shape or the same. Uh, I'm actually taking a tad of an edge off of this one. Okay, that's why I like this knife because it's fairly sharp. Now here's some here's some pieces that you can add in like right around right, there. Right, this can go. And oh, we have extra swordfish for us to eat. Today. Well, that was sort of the plan. And I think maybe the steak layer and yeah, and then. Yeah, that's it. There's no more because going on I don't here want because the additional weight on there. Yeah, I mean, look at this. This is already bigger than we had planned on it being, but there was really no way to do it smaller. Yeah, I just needed something to smooth this out. If I was doing this on a regular basis, if I was doing this uh, as making these for people all the time, I'd probably let them sit for like an hour at a time just to just to start to harden up in the fridge and then come out and add another layer. And to be one perfectly honest, I but, think that but, that's actually not a bad idea. But can we, we put this in the refrigerator we, for about 15 minutes? We can. I think this sure. is not, that's not a bad idea. I want it to set up so I've got a sturdy platform here. Well, you're going to need to do that before you put the last layer on uh, on the side. Let's see, so we are going to chill this probably for about 15, 20 minutes, a half hour at the most, and then we're going to add another layer. That way, a better chance that it all stays uh, stays intact, and not only that, but to keep the temperature down. We need to keep the temperature. Keep the temperature down. And, and we're and we're and we're good with temperature right now. We did. Yeah, we've we got did, everything. We did on chill high. some things uh, before we added them in layers onto this. But I still would like to get it set up a little bit so that God, this is more even than the work. last chocolate cake I made. No, I don't know. I don't know if that says anything good. I'm not sure. Either, so. But. Yes, and we'll, I was going to say, we'll stay tuned for me flinging potato icing at Dennis. Okay, we're back. This sat for probably about a half hour. And Christine is looking at uh, all the sides and just kind of evening a few things out. Uh, because it's so much easier with cakes because cakes are round or rectangular or square. And they're designed that way before you start putting the icing on. It's a little more difficult. So Christine is doing a, a little circular cutting so that it fits. And tell me at any point if this is... You're seeing gaps or something's not filling in properly. I'm kind of taking this meat right to the edge so that we don't have it going up into a little cone. That's what I don't want. And you had pointed that out. So thank you. But we're going to use most of this tenderloin. Like I said, thank God for the mashed potatoes. And I've got one little corner there that needs to be filled in. Well, actually, you have a couple um, V-shaped 
things there that need to go. I think these two little ones I'm just filling in with mashed potato. Yeah, yeah, I would. But this one You need them to you need everything to set. That I need this needs an actual piece in there. So and thank you all for your patience with this. Watching me slice it. Well, yeah, we'll it, another. yeah, whoever's left. Yeah, who's ever it, left watching. Who hasn't point. fallen asleep. What nut job, yeah. Um, and that looks good. is not that bad to work with comparatively. I mean, I mean, it looks like it's got chocolate or some kind of hazelnut flex in it. And that is all bacon. That is ground up paleo bacon. Now this could be, it could be uh, stuck into the oven to warm up, but we're not going to recommend that to the client. We've already told that we told that person that it's too risky. So it is going to be cut out. A piece, big pieces are going to be cut out and warmed in the oven separately. And that way, there's less risk of having uh, parts of it dry out because there's several layers and trying to get the internal layers to be warm enough. Uh, it's there's too much. There's too much for in a situation is, like this. So we, uh, Christine, came up with a different plan for how to heat it. My suggestion to her would be to cut it in half with a very sharp knife, and then cut lay, cut a slice out of it. However big they want. However big they want. I would say that you know a in third and cut it in half and then uh, thirds or quarters which would give you either six or eight total pieces. So whichever, you know, whatever And this is bigger than I initially spoke to her about, but I mean, there is no way that this could have been smaller and that successful. Well, the problem is- Harvey, get out of that you make bag. It, if you make it too small, and it, it, you know, it doesn't look like anything. So yes, to make it for two there people- There has to be. So they're gonna have multiple meals or invite some friends over and have it. Really nice looking icing there. You know, it's, it's really actually funny. looking like a cake. It's look that's the whole thing is I wanted it to look like a cake. As long as it looks like a cake in the end, that's exactly what I want. I actually <laughs> like it the look of this thing. I don't know, I, mean, I know I'm a bit of a nutter, but um yeah. And you know the difference? Regular icing after a while starts making me sick to my stomach, the smell of the powdered sugar and everything that goes into it. With this, all I can smell is bacon and chive. I mean, that's not, that's not too shabby. Christine had a really good idea. She said she saw it somewhere where you put them into a little cups and, uh, and small uh, baking cups for like muffin cups. And then and, curl and the and bacon. Then, and it curls them and, and puts them together almost like little rosettes. And if you take them off a little bit early, you can wrap them around shrimp or something like that. In this case, let them go all the way and they're like uh, little rosettes. So that's going to be on here. And the guy's probably not going to know what they are, but at some point he'll probably figure it out. So now we're going to make it pretty. It's already we're, pretty. we're almost done. We're almost done, yeah, this is like, we'll make a compound butter really fast in the morning to go with it, or, or you know, just something So really after quick. it's sliced and it's heated up so They have a little sauce to go with it. Sauce that'll go on top of uh, this uh, large slice on a plate or small plate. And so this is just going to be light starbursts. God, it's amazing how well this works with mashed potatoes. Look like little spiders or some type of ocean creature. Which was exactly what I was going for. I'm sure you were. Well, that may be the rosette that's... The, the one that I fix? Looks yeah. good. Looks good. 
They look like little spiders now. All right, I know I'm over here and you can't see it, but the last ocean creature. There you go. Okay. How many are you gonna do? more. I think that's about right. Because I don't really consider that even numbers because there's five around the outside. I'd make that one look bigger. There we go. Rosettes. You know, it's funny, it looks completely different in the camera. It looks like you're doing some sort of chocolate butter, like mocha buttercream with little crunchies in it. I know, it's, it's bizarre. It is really bizarre. And the finished product. Surf and Turf Meat Cake. You've got two layers of seared tenderloin, a layer of garlic shrimp, and a beautiful layer of seasoned brown swordfish. It's held together by whipped potato icing with bacon, chive, and sour cream. Finishing it off, we've got six bacon rosettes. Our um, client will be picking this, well, we'll be handing it off later today, and we'll get a shot of the inside when she uh, cuts into it for her, um, for the recipient, a good friend of hers. So enjoy. Surf and Turf Meat Cake.